So I'm going to say a couple things here about group isomorphism. So two groups are isomorphic if they look the same, or they kind of operate the same, or they have the same structure in a way that I am about to try to explain. So I have two groups here. The first one is the group uh, Z2 cross Z2. So you know Z2 is the group that just has two elements, 0 and 1. So this is just the integers uh, mod 2. All right, so 1 plus 1 is 0, and 0 plus 1 is, is 1, and 0 plus 0 is 0. And right, so it's a boolean, so that gives everything. And OK, so the way you, you go from this thing to, to this product, this is called the Cartesian product, so you can do this for any, any two groups. So what you do is you make all possible pairs of the group elements. So the group elements in here are 0 and 1, so all the possible pairs are 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1. All right, so you can make a new group by interpreting the operation on these pairs just component-wise the way it was defined before. So to do 0 plus 0, what I do is in this coordinate, I do 0 plus 0 is 0. And in this coordinate, I do 0 plus 0 is 0. And, and to do 0, 0 plus 1, 1, OK, so 1 plus this 0 is 1. And 1 plus this 0 is 1. And OK, so you can see that 0, 0 is going to be the identity, because just like 0 didn't change anything in, in Z2, right? It doesn't change anything in the product either, because <coughs> it doesn't change anything component-wise. So it therefore, it doesn't change anything. So just to try something a little different, what about 1, 1 plus 1, 0? What happens here? So here's 0, right? So 0 gets added to 1 and becomes 1. And here's 1, and 1 gets added to 1 and becomes 0. So that's what makes this multiplication table or Cayley table for the group. OK, and so let's compare that to this other group, the Klein 4 group. So if you're curious about this, you, there's a nice article about it on Wikipedia. So this is just a group of order four that was defined by a mathematician named Klein. And so you can take this multiplication table as its definition. So there's not much more to say except that this is the multiplication table. And it does have, it has to have the group properties, obviously. So, so this oper the operation that's defined by this table is closed, associative, and has inverses and an identity element, which is 1. So notice that 1 times anything is itself, right? OK, so other than just having the properties, you know, this is the way the group is defined, and so there's not much more to say. All right, so we have these two. So these two are isomorphic, and so I'm going to construct an isomorphism below, and I think with this example you can see um, how it is that you can compute whether any two given groups have an isomorphism. So the first thing I'm going to do is give the two groups kind of the same universe. So there's no reason that you can't think of, of any finite group as just a uh, as just the numbers between 0 and its order minus 1, right? So this thing has four elements in it, so I'm just going to, their names are not important, right? What gives the structure is the multiplication table. So I'm just going to call this first one 0. And in fact, you can see that I'm labeling these things by kind of their value as a binary number. So this one is worth 0, this one's worth 1, this one's worth 2, this one's worth 3. OK, or, or it's just an arbitrary mapping. If you don't understand what I'm saying about the binary numbers, it doesn't matter. OK, so if you go up to the Cayley table and you just dumbly translate these, these little ordered pairs into the codes that I just gave them here, then you get this table. So let's just check. So this one says 1 in it, right? This is the position. Um, if you think of this as a matrix in C++ or something, then this is the position 1, 2, all right? And, and so if we go back up to the original, the uncoded table here, and look in row 1, column 2, you get 0, 1. OK, so is it true that the code of 0, 1 is 1? Yes, it is, because we're just encoding these things as binary numbers. OK, so it just translates like that. And so similarly, 
this Klein 4 group is defined in terms of 1 and a bunch of letters, but there's no reason not to just think of them as the numbers between 0 and 3. And so if you translate the, the group table um, into, you know, according to this rule, 1 becomes 0, A becomes 1, B becomes 2, AB becomes 3, then you get this, all right? Okay, so now these two groups kind of have the same universe. So what does it mean for them to be isomorphic? So it really just means that there's there's a way to, to swap rows and columns in these tables and turn them turn them into each other. So these they're isomorphic it means their Cayley tables are kind of just scrambled versions of one another. So this is kind of like a little Rubik's cube type puzzle to come up with an isomorphism between these two things. All right. So, uh, all right. So they're they're isomorphic if there exists a permutation that kind of unscrambles the Cayley table of one into the Cayley table of the other. So there are lots of permutations, right? So with, with four elements, there are 24 permutations and the number gets enormous quickly. So with seven elements, you already have 5,040 permutations. But let's just say that you can look through all permutations. So to check for an isomorphism, unless you use some, some heuristics or some smart tricks about group isomorphism invariants or and other things like that you are just going to have to check every single permutation but for these small orders that we're working with it doesn't matter the computer is fast enough so I am just going to tell you that the permutation that works in this case is the permutation so a permutation is just you know it's a reordering of some numbers um, so what I'm doing here is uh, imagine that you have 0 1 two, three. So what this permutation is doing is it's leaving zero alone, it's swapping one and three, and it's leaving two alone. Okay, so how do I apply that to a Cayley table? All right, so um, what, what it means is swap the first column and the second column, uh, the third column, right, so counting from zero. So swap these two and you have to do the same thing for the rows. So swap those two columns and swap those two rows. And if you do that, then you will see that that Cayley table becomes exactly this Cayley table. So let's just, I mean, I wrote it down right here, but that's not very helpful, right? It's just the same from your point of view as my copying this. So let's go through and kind of, you know, psychically connect and, and construct the second one from the first one. So what does it mean to rewrite this thing swapping the rows and columns? So first zero comes, right? Now there was three here before, but now I've swapped these columns, so it's going to be one, two, three. Okay, so so far so good because this matches the first row of the Klein 4 group Cayley table. So let's just keep going. So now I, I look here, but since I've swapped these rows, I am actually looking here. The first thing I write is 1, and now 2 has been swapped with 0, so I write 0, and 3 is 3, and now 0 has been swapped with 2, so I write 2. Okay, and you can see that 1, 0, 3, 2 is exactly the first row of the Cayley table of the Klein 4 group, and if you keep doing this, you know, and etc., then what you'll find is that it produces the Cayley table right here for the Klein 4 group. And so this permutation is an isomorphism between the two groups. Excellent. Okay, so that always that always works, all right? So one way to think of two groups being isomorphic, just write the Cayley table with, with the elements numbered between zero and the order minus one, and then look for a permutation that, that transforms one Cayley table into the other. So maybe that still seems kind of hard to compute. So how do you how do you write a computer program that does that? So there's an easy way. And so here's the easy way. All right. So I'm going to assume that that you can somehow look through all the permutations. So I'm just going to refer to this kind of like typical permutation P. Okay, so you have to write some C++ code or whatever to to actually look through all the permutations um, and I can give you a, a link for that if you want if you want to know where the, the web page is that describes the standard library way 
to do permutations, etc. All right, so let's let M be the matrix, which is I'm just thinking of as the same as the Cayley table for the first group, and N is going to be the matrix or the Cayley table for the second group, okay? And let's say you have this permutation, and just to remind you, this is the same as, you know, for the sake of example, let's think of this as being the same as the permutation that I gave above. So it's a function from 0, 1, 2, 3 to, to 0, 1, 2, 3, and this is what it does. It sends 0 to 0, it sends 1 to 3, swaps 1 and 3, sends 2 to 2, and sends 3 to 1. So 1 and 3 are swapped and everything else is, is left alone. So that's how you can think of this P thing. All right, and so I leave it to you to check that both matrices have the same dimension. So if two groups don't have the same number of elements, then, then they can't be essentially the same. That wouldn't make sense, right? And so you have to check that, that both M and N are the same dimensions. So the orders of the two groups are the same. Now we say that P gives an isomorphism. So this is you can take this as the definition if you want. If for all i, j less than n, so this means that for all entries in the table m, um, entry i, j in the table m, if you apply the permutation to it, then it gives you the same number that you would get by first permuting the coordinates and then looking it up in n. Okay, so, I mean, if you do this enough, you get you get weird psychological hallucinations that come along with, with what's happening here. So just kind of imagine P is coming inside here, and as it passes over M, it transforms it into N, and then it lands and kind of distributes on the two elements. So that's how I think of that, I think of it happening. I guess the point is that this is an easy, easy criterion to check with a computer program, right? This is just one line of code assuming that you can manage to express the permutation P. So I think that's the technical challenge here. And now it's just one line, right? So you have two tables. Do they represent the same group? Well, you just have to write a nested repeat loop, something like 4i, you know, for all i, and then inside there, 4j, uh, for all j, uh, less than the order, and now you just need to check that. And that's all there is to writing the program. And right, so here I, I do a little manual check, just a little sanity check. So if you go up and and try this, you can see that um, the the one three entry in the M table. So what is that? Here is one three is one. Okay. So if you apply if you apply the permutation to that, you get um, three, right? All right, so, um, oh wait, sorry. This is uh, first row, third column. So did I do that right? So first row, third column is two. Sorry, okay, yes. So this is actually two. Okay, now apply P to two, right? But P to two, uh, P applied to two is just two. So what we have here is is two. Okay, now that let's compare that to what we get over here, right? So now apply p to one, and that gives you three. So that's just the definition of p here. Apply p to uh, three, and that gives you one, because p, uh, what p basically does is swap one and three. And so you look up um, third row, first column, and n, and let's make sure that it is also two. All right, so let's see. So what? <laughs> Short-term memory is not great. Um, I'm supposed to be looking up 3, 1. Okay, so here is 3, and then 1 is here, and it's 2. Ding, 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 ding. It worked. Great. And so that is the review of isomorphism, and it's over. Oh, God, don't stop. I would just want to stop my tape here.